Okay, let's say about the problem again. Okay, for this problem, we need to we need um we need a sigma to meet two condition. One is about the expectation value of observable h, and one is we need the sigma to be the valid quantum state. But when we solving when we are solving this problem, we have uh, one challenge. The related entropy is only finite if the sigma. Uh, if the sigma contains with, within the support in the substrate in the substrate where the rows where the rows eigenvalues is non-zero, so it leads us to the mean result. The first mean result in our work. This is the theorem work on the solution of the problem, which gives the full form of the sigma. Uh, within two components, one is in the support of row and another in the kernels of row. So for the support of row, it takes the form proportional to the exponential of lambda times h plus log rho, and in the kernels of row, because rho is zero, so the sigma should be zero. And we know from the constraint of the h and the rho, we can determine the optimal value lambda star here, and this is the optimal point minimizing the quantum validity entropy. Let's go through the proof catch. So we start by the condition on the support subspace, which means we can decompose the sigma into two parts. One is within the support of row and another in the kernel of row. We know the kernel of row parts contributes nothing to the validity entropy, so we can reduce the uh, related entropy into the components only in the support of row. For the second step, we want to use the same method as the classical one, Lagrangian multiplier, to spy the stationary point. Firstly, we set up the matrix Lagrangian. We know we are dealing with the complex value matrix. It's not a straightforward to solve it. So how do we solve this matrix Lagrangian? Here we use a very useful uh, rectangle calculator tool, which allows us to differentiate with respect to the matrix and its conjugate separately, and it simplifies the function involving the complex matrices. So for the last step, we can further analyze it. The stationary points give the optimal points uh, can minimizing the constraint related entropy. To get into the details of this step two, we first use the two important results from this written calculus in this tour box. And with this tour, we can take the derivative of the Lagrange multiplier, Lagrangian, and set it equal to zero. It gives the ex expression of the sigma, which also take the exponential form is lambda star, lambda times h plus log rho and divided by them after the normalization. So it leads to the solution, the, the full form, the sol solution of sigma, as I mentioned in the theorem one. It also brings us to the definition of the quantum Escher transform, which is the main important result of our work. Given the density operator rho is positive and observable h as a parameter vector theta, we know the quantum Escher transform of rho parameterized by theta at h takes this form exponential to the theta times h plus log rho divided by the trace of them. Same as the condition in the classical definition. The theta here is also general and not specific for minimizing the quantum related entropy. And we can know that this quantum Escher transform contains the classical Escher transform as a special case when the rho and h are diagonal and commute. So now we have the theoretical construction of the quantum Escher transform. How do we put it into practical? 
for the next key step, we are thinking about the question is, how can we implement this on the quantum computers? Let's go through the, the introduction of the raw encoding and quantum singular value transformation we will use for the algorithm framework later. So let's say, if we have a broad encoding of a matrix A and the spectral norm of A bounded by one, and we can efficiently apply the unitary and its inverse. The key property of the unitary is the matrix A can be embedded on the top left corner of the matrix. And this leads to the fundamental theorem of the broad encoding, which is quantum singular value transformation, QSVT. And Given a broad encoding of this Hermitonian Hermitian matrix A, we can construct a broad encoding of the polynomial of the singular value of this matrix A. We are talking about the low degree polynomial here because we don't want the depth of the quantum circuits increase significantly. And a very important assumption on this polynomial, which is the polynomial of the broad encoding A should be bounded by one half. This condition is very weak, but it's very important because it guarantees us can embed the broad encoding, the polynomial in, into the unitaries. And this leads to the second main results, which is the theorem two on the algorithm complexity. The com algorithm is based on the broad encoding inputs, outputs, and uh, subnormalized quantum extra transform, making this kappa times log square of what of over epsilon curious to the broad encoding of rho and the log one over epsilon curious to the broad encoding of each observable h, j. And let's go through the algorithm framework. The inputs of our algorithm is are unitary, which prepare the purification of the density operator and the broad encoding of the observable H j, which is u j, and parameter vector theta and arrow. We aim to output a broad encoding of the subnormalized actual transform state, which is sigma here. For this first step, we will use the unitary of row to construct the broad encoding of row and then construct the broad encoding of log row using the technique in the lemma one. So lemma one say given the broad encoding of log row, broad encoding of row bounded by the one of over kappa, then we can construct the broad encoding of log row using the t queries to the u row. Here the t is the degree of the approximating polynomial. For the next step, we will prepare the state preparation pair to encode the coefficient of the operator for combining the uh, operators. Then I'll finally give the broad encoding of the Nini combination. Here is the HJ and the log row. Technique is the Lama 2. Lama 2 is a slight generalization of the previous result in the original QSVT paper. For the previous results, it only allows the same subnormalized factor alphas for all observable AJ, but our lemma allows different alpha for the AJ. So in this lemma, we have the state preparation pair, and then we can construct the encoding of the linear combining operator A, making one queries to each for encoding UJ. Finally, we can construct the broad encoding of the exponential to the n using the technique in the lemma three. Yeah, same at given the broad encoding of h and can construct the broad encoding of the exponential. So finally, we can see this is the pseudocode of the algorithm and then the picture here give a, ex, explain the step easier with this broad encoding inputs, we construct the broad encoding of the polynomial and linear combination, and then finally outputs the broad encoding of the actual transform states. If we want the normalized actual transform states, we can use the output of this algorithm and then apply the amplitude amplification to post-select the actual transform, normalized actual transform using the technique similar to the Gibbs state preparation with this total curious complexity. So in short, our work uh, 
give the story which is the minimal related entropy problem with constraints inspired us to define the quantum Escher transform, a quantum generalization of the classical Escher transform. And we shows that it can be implemented in the singular value transformation technique, which construct the algorithm framework. And then it, I also leave some open question about the application from the classical problem. Can we quantize the classical problem in the quantum version like option placing, important sampling, or Levy processes? And also considering quantum version of the two empirical risk minimization in the machine learning. Or even better, can we apply the quantum extra transform in the uniquely quantum problem? So that's all. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. Okay, we have uh, about eight minutes for questions. Yep. Thank you for a nice talk. Uh, in, your, in your setting, you minimize the first argument of relative entropy, mm -hmm. but uh, in, for example, like quantum resource theory or integument theory, people often consider minimization of the second argument, uh, like in the some constraints such as, uh, you, you see what I mean, right? Uh, you mean the, the problem setting? Like in the in the in, in, in some other setting, we can we can consider minimization of the second argument of quantum relative entropy to define, for example, to measure some entanglement, to measure entanglement, or so. So these these functions are also useful, right? You, uh, which function? Uh, so okay, you 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 minimize the for, for first you minimize the first argument of relative entropy. In this setting, yes. You, 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 yes, you, 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 in this setting, in quantum established transform, you minimize the first argument of first. quantum relative entropy, right? This one. Yes. Uh, no, uh, yeah, and, and also the quantum one. Sorry. The quantum one. one. Sorry. Uh, so sorry for. This is the yes, yes, yes. one. Yeah. You, my, my, my question is you, you minimize the, why do you minimize the first argument of quantum relative entropy? It's also possible to consider minimization of the second argument. And in, in, in some in application, do you have some opinion which is more useful? Uh, you mean the application of minimizing the relative entropy? Yes, yeah, which should we minimize first argument or second argument? Uh, I mean, I mean, you, you, it is, I mean you, you, you consider this setting, but uh, you could also consider minimization of second argument, right? So, uh, yes. yeah, which is what's the difference in these two settings? And minimizing the classical one and yes. the quantum one. No, um, minimization first argument or second argument. Oh, in, maximizing in... the entropy. So, so you 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 minimize sigma. Oh, so sorry, maybe we should discuss later. But we you minimize sigma, right? Yeah. But uh, you can also consider minimization of rho. Uh, oh, in, you in, can in, change in, the yes, yeah, you position. Can you, you can you 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 could swap. This is a different setting. But uh, could you comment on the difference of these two? Which is a bit oh, okay. Maybe we should discuss. Uh, you want to minimize the relative entropy between between the. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can't answer the question. Just swap row and sigma. Row and sigma. Just swap. Yeah, but. Yeah. Oh, you mean given the sigma, we want to find a row to yeah. minimize this? Yes, 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 yes. I think it, it is, is this, it does this also have some application, or does this does it make sense for you? I think it gives very similar meaning yes. for the relative entropy. Yes. So far for the relative entropy application, uh, I, I, I know one in the machine learning, we can use the relative entropy to construct the loss function of the mm -hmm. model, then, yeah. Okay, maybe it's, it's it, it, okay, maybe in machine learning it's more common to be the first one. But uh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we can discuss it. Okay, do we have more questions? Hi, um, thanks for the talk. Could you show the pseudocode slide again? I had a question about the um, complexity of the algorithm and I guess maybe asking if you could comment a bit more on, um, yeah, whether we expect, like is there a comparison with this expression to a, a classical, value that we can see that it should be better. And I mean, I guess I'm looking at it now and uh, like this 
normalization factor n is it true like could it be exponential in d if theta uh, the vector theta had like kind of random entries um should i think of that as an exponentially large number or yeah maybe you could comment on how to think about the complexity uh for implementing the classical one state one yeah or uh, yeah or i guess classical algorithm one yes so far we we just think about the classical states as the special case of the quantum state so this quantum algorithm is like implement a more general state and uh -huh. it can be reduced to the classical state uh-huh yeah. so there's no classical analog of this exact uh -huh. thing and is it true that the normalization here like do we have a sense on on that like what is the um like would it be exponentially large in the dimension d or what is like the key parameter so you know that you want to know what the meaning of this yeah i don't know i guess i was just curious if you could comment more on uh like which parameter is the most important one to to be thinking about uh okay <laughs> i think the dimension of the matrix n will be important and we are thinking about the Gibbs state preparation algorithm also. And for that, they want to remove the partition function Z. So maybe for the next uh, following up project, we will want to, we also want to remove the Z from the complexity. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have time for one more short question. If anyone's got a short question, Otherwise, let's thank the speaker again and move on to the next question.